It's time for the VolQuest podcast, where we dissect the biggest news items of the week. Good Thursday, everyone. Welcome to the VolQuest.com podcast, special edition of the podcast. Glad to have with us Tennessee head football coach Josh Heupel as the volunteers about 12 days away from the start of spring practice number two. Coach, thanks for joining us. Before we get into year two, let's reflect just a just a touch on year one. I know, I know it's behind you, but I do want to ask you a couple of questions after you self scouted and looked around. Describe year one in a word or a phrase. A word. You're going to try to boil it down to uh, to one word. Okay, you can give me a phrase. Uh, uh, constant growth, and evolution, um, connection, accountability. Why was, why was connection, why, why is that such an important part of what year one was? Yeah, I think the reason why behind whatever you do uh, is so important. It's what drives you uh, when no one's watching. You know, it's what drives you uh, when you feel like <clears throat> doing something, um, you know, at, at half of what you're capable of or, or choose not to do it at all. And, and uh, uh, so, uh, you know, our players why was important, um, making sure that they define that. But then the connection part of it, this is the greatest team sport in all of, all of sports. And, and uh, it's played by, by tough men. It's, it's tough. It's physical. It's violent. There's nothing comfortable about it. Um, that connection piece is uh, critical to uh, the evolution of a program. It, it changes the, the dynamics uh, of how you enter the building. Uh, it changes your interactions. Uh, I think that's extremely important. When you reflect, what was the most rewarding part of last year for you? I mean, you've been coaching for a long time. What what was rewarding about year one for you? Um, I think just the the, the constant growth of, of our, our players. And in some ways, being in year two, finishing up the first quarter of, of our off season gives you great reflection back at times of man look at where we started look how far we've come <clears throat> we've climbed so high on this mountain there's a lot of it left to climb but it gives you reason to pause occasionally and, and take great pride in in who they are just I'm just talking about as men and, and how they approach every day and um, man I love this this football team the issues that we're dealing with now are so different than they were a year ago um, you know Trust, connection, uh, constantly growing, you know, from off season to spring ball, and I'm talking about a year ago, to uh, our summer conditioning, to all of our fans being able to say, see the way we continue to grow during the course of the season. That's the first time that the people, our fan base that is listening to this, got a chance to see it. As coaches, we saw it, you know, incrementally every day, and uh, our players did too, but uh, I just, I love the way that they grew, and uh, I do. I love the mentality and attitude and effort in which they competed. We didn't compete perfect. Um, you never will in this game either. But, um, you know, from the opening kickoff to the last second on the clock, man, our kids played hard. I know as coaches you never you, – you, you always remember moments or you always remember plays or you always think should have done this, could have done that. Is there – is there in moments of reflection where you were something you were disappointed about in year one that 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 kind of eats at you, or are you not of that mentality? Man, in coaching, you're always looking backwards at the end of it and saying, "All right, how do we improve?" You know, from schemes to teaching to our personnel. Now, how do we move forward and put them in the best position? knowing that that target is always going to constantly be a moving target. You know, yesterday we just got done looking at, you know, specific situations and, you know, how the decision-making process unfolded for me and how I can be better. Our staff looks at those things. Our players look at them. Um, we're constantly looking at how we can be better. So how are you better going into this spring as a coach, as a leader of this program, than you were a year ago, six months ago. How's Josh Heifel I, I, I think, uh, first and foremost, just, you know, my, my wife and I were actually just talking about this because, you know, she'll come into the building and her connection and interaction with our players is so different than it was a year ago uh, because they know who we are, what we're about, and, and what we're trying to accomplish and how we're going to help them do those things. Um, that's true as a coach, too, man. I understand these players 
in a completely different way than I did a year ago. A year ago, I'm trying to get to know their names. Now you, you have an, a, a year worth of experiences, but you have a better understanding of you know, where they came from and you know, the great successes and the failures and, and their goals and dreams. And <coughs> you're able to communicate and interact in, in, a, in a better way than you were a year ago, just simply having been here. Um, as, as a football coach, man, you constantly are growing. And, you know, as we head into spring ball, you look back at, you know, the things that we have to be better at uh, from a year ago, just the statistical data, um, or to the fundamentals and techniques that we know we need to improve on. And how, we, how do we incorporate that in the 15 spring practices? How do we put these guys in a better position to grow uh, during this time? How is this place, this, this school, Tennessee, Knoxville, different than you thought it would be? I mean, th your, your arrival here happened so fast. I mean, it was phone call, few hour conversations, bam, it, here you are as, as the coach. After having been here with you and your family, how is this place different? You know, is there, is there more assets here to help you than you thought? How, how is the program differently than, than what you thought that first month on the yeah, job? Yeah, sure. Certainly when, uh, you know, our family chose to, to come here, uh, the power of, of this, this brand, this logo, um, the power of our fan base, um, the resources were things that we thought and knew to be true, uh, and that was a big part of why we, we chose to come. I think what's really unique and, and different, um, and certainly our fan base is awesome, and our administration and you know the coaches we've been able to hire because of the resources that we have. But what we're able to do for our players is those things are all great. I, th I think it's it was unknown to me. Like I knew this would be a great outdoor living space. You know, uh, you know, with my wife and kids, we love to do things outdoors. Just how unique of a city Knoxville really is, and and. Uh, you know, I call it a college city when I'm talking to the recruits because uh, it is. It, it's everything surrounds and, and uh, you know, the orange and white and the UT is, and, and athletics is such an integral part of, of, the, of the city itself. But uh, it's, it's a great place to live. There's, you know, national worldwide headquarters here. There's real opportunities for personal and professional growth. There, there's culture here. Um, it's just a great place to live and, and a really unique opportunity for guys that want to play in the SEC to be able to pair uh, championship caliber uh, football with a place that's going to afford you a really unique experience during your four years and a place that you can live long term too. It's, uh, it's you know, one of the rare things in, in this league. Makes that a different sales pitch in recruiting than you thought it would be when you first took the job? Absolutely. Um, you know, I really hadn't spent a ton of time here. Sure. When you, you travel in as, as a competitor, you, you fly in, you go to the hotel, and then you, you, you ride drive down to the Alcoa stadium. Highway, and that's it. Yeah, you, you drive to the stadium. The drive to the stadium was a big part of why I wanted to be here. Uh, but uh, um, it, uh, the, the city is uh, certainly uh, something that uh, has been, been great and something that a little bit different than what we maybe anticipated. The other thing is just the, the people inside of the, the community have been great, and, and that's true of my wife and kids, but our assistant coaches too. It's been very welcoming, been, uh, been an easy transition for all of them. As did you finish this part of your off-season program and you get ready to start spring practice, where is your program right now? Um, we're in phase two, getting ready to start our, <laughs> our spring ball, man. Last season, yeah, I said this a year ago, um, the outside noise, a lot of it, you know, questioning or uncertain and in some ways negative last year, had no bearing on, on who we were when we lined up and, and got ready to go play. How we worked determined all of those things. Our successes a year ago, our failures a year ago, uh, the outside noise, more positive this year at this point probably than, than uh, it was a year ago has nothing to do with what's going to happen when we kick off. Who we are, how we attack every single day, uh, our connection to each other, our ability to, to understand what we're doing and, and, and compete at the highest level uh, with a ton of confidence will dictate all of those things. And So let's be about our business, understand the, the goals and the expectations here. Um, they're higher in the building than they are anywhere else. Um, and uh, uh, let's... Uh, Let's win every day and, and work towards that goal together. But you have a returning quarterback, returning leading receiver, returning leading rusher, starters on both sides of the ball. From a national perspective, from the outside noise media perspective, there is going to be a layer of expectations that you didn't have a year ago. 
how do you how do you manage that? Do you have those discussions with your team? How do you deal with the notion that people are talking about your quarterback as a potential Heisman guy, this and all these things? How do you deal with that? Yeah, um, we want our program to have a, a ton of outside noise and, and uh, have high expectations or, or belief in what's going to happen. Um, you know, in you know, ten years ago, I probably would have said ignore and, and don't don't listen, and you can block it all out. That's just not. It's not real in today's landscape. Uh, you're going to hear the noise, but you can't let it sit uh, in between uh, uh, your ears. And, and uh, you got to filter it out and understand that how you approach everything that you do every day is going to dictate where you go. And uh, this competitive landscape, um, your competitive nature has got to be, uh, be elite. And, and that doesn't happen on game day. Everybody wants to win on game day. you got to win every day during the off season. And... Uh, so come in and, and, uh, and meet and surpass the expectations uh, as a teammate. Grab the guy next year and make sure that he's doing the same thing. Our guys are continuing to grow. We've become more connected. The way that we are attacking every day is completely different than it was a year ago, uh, certainly at this time, but even at the end of the year. I uh, love the, the growth and, and, uh, and what we're continuing to do here. Does it require better leadership? when you get in, in your locker room in terms of managing those expectations? I, I would have, and maybe I'm wrong, but I would think last year it was easier to, to get everybody to hold the rope once they got in and figured out you had a plan. You know, a, a year ago. Maybe not. A year ago you were trying to get everybody to get on the rope. Okay. And then a year ago you are trying to get everybody to pull really hard on that rope. And we grew incrementally throughout – you know, the lead up to, to kickoff in September. Um, you know, our guys are all on the rope. Uh, they're pulling. Um, some still need to pull a little bit harder. Uh, but uh, I love the way that they're competing. But, you know, we talk about just, you know, championship seasons happen because not of, of coaching. And I say that coaching is important. But there's a, a, a demand, uh, a confidence, and uh, – an accountability inside your locker room that, that is different, and that comes from leadership within the locker room. You know, every Wednesday before we get to spring ball it is about developing that, learning how to communicate, developing leaders, giving them opportunities to, to experience those roles, fail in them, help them grow. And uh, um, you know, because of that, I think we are developing more leaders inside of our program, still have to constantly do that. That's never a, an end, end project. Um, but uh, we got to keep doing doing things the right way that way. The closer you try to get to the top and be a championship program and compete for championships, is it harder to pull the rope? Does it? And I don't mean from the the kids working hard. I mean closing that gap to to try to get there. Oh, for sure. I, you know, we started uh, this this off season talking about that very thing. You know, we made up a ton of ground uh, a year ago. In some ways, that ground was a lot easier to make up than the inches that we are going to have to make up now. And uh, we give them visuals of those things, but that's real. Um, you know, for us a year ago, it was just learning how to be a good human in some ways and, and be uh, a, a person that I can count on and that's going to do the right things. Um, now you're you're uh, you're talking about the mental approach to every day, the effort and the strain and and. Uh, you know, for all of us, we've got to continue to make up that ground. Earlier this week, you hired Kelsey Pope as your wide receivers coach. I know you interviewed a lot of guys. Mm -hmm. what, what, why was Kelsey Pope the right answer for you? Yeah, I believed, uh, believed in him at the very beginning of the process. Uh, uh, you know, my responsibility is to find the absolute right person and the best person for the job. Um, you know, went through interview process and, and uh, again, just came away that uh, it was without a shadow of a doubt uh, he was the right guy for the job. Uh, he's got an unbelievable ability uh, to connect with players, uh, connect with people. Um, he's relationship driven. That will help him so much in the recruiting. Uh, he's a tireless, tireless worker. Um, and so he's going to put the effort in on the, on the recruiting side of it. He's a great technician. He has complete understanding of what we're doing offensively. Uh, he's been a huge part of the success of that room and us as an offense. Um, you know, since we got here in, in late January, early February last year. And, um, you know, he helps us move the needle in the right direction. No, no, uh, 
no second guessing or questions asked about that. And everybody in the building knows and feels that way. How did you find him to bring him in as an analyst? What 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 was the connection to where you guys cross paths for you to bring him here when you got here from UCF? Yeah, actually, um, you know, had multiple people uh, talk about him when we were going through the process um, at UCF. And uh, as soon as we came here, uh, we immediately contacted him. Did you know after he was here a couple of weeks that this guy's this guy's got a, a high ceiling? Whether, whether not, not that you were going to hire him right away, I don't mean that, but was he a guy that you could tell very early on after he was here, <laughs> yeah, this over, guy's a rising star? Over the years, I've interviewed uh, a lot of wide receiver guys have been around him. Um, no doubt in my mind that he is and was going to be a superstar in this, uh, in this business. And uh, um, just his ability to, to communicate and lead and connect uh, are really, really rare. And, uh, you know, when we got an opportunity to get him, I uh, felt like he definitely was, uh, was the right guy. Is that position more technical than the average Joe out there thinks in terms of what you ask? Because a lot of people say, run fast, right? You know, you, yeah. you, you run rub routes and you, and you get guys open and you run fast. Is there, particularly in your mm -hmm. system, is there a lot more to it than, than just a guy who's a really good athlete? Run fast might work if you're seeing, uh, you know, corners off at, at 12 yards. <laughs> that might be the only thing you need. The, this game, the wide receiver position is absolutely fundamentals and technique. The ability to sink your hips, stance and start, um, you know, put your plant foot in the right spot. Um, you know, the, the fundamentals of getting off of press coverage, which in this league you have to be able to do. You got to give kids tools. Absolutely, but every position. Yeah, I mean, it's not just a recruit and play. You have to be able to develop guys. If you don't, you're not giving them the ability to be their best. They're they're uh, they're a sinking ship. And um, so, you know, for us, elite recruiters, guys are gonna put a ton of time and energy into it and have the ability to connect with players and guys that can help develop that room. It's absolutely critical. Bunch of newcomers going to hit the practice field. What do you like about this? What do you like about this group? I know you, and I'm not asking for individuals and, and anointing anybody. I'm not saying that, but what do you like we, about that we, group? We won't anoint anybody before we get on, <laughs> on the field. I can promise you. I know you uh, won't. I, I know, I'm, I've had enough <laughs> conversations with you that you're not going to do that. Yeah. But what do you like about this group? Ah, man, uh, 14 guys that have showed up on campus have maybe had two things that they've missed the entire lead up to spring ball. I've never been around a group that has acted this mature when first stepping on campus. Um, who they are and how they go about their business, they've bought into it right from the jump. Um, they have developed and, and are, are in a, they're a real piece of this football team already. Like they're so interwoven into uh, to our locker room at this point i think that's really unique and and guys that will be really strong leaders for us guys that have you know gotten up and and spoken in team meetings already that that's the rarest of rare and done it in a way where veterans accept it and love it and, and uh you know our old guys have done a great job of, of spending extra time with them i, I mean you know, we, we're in the mornings now. You know, they go to class from, you know, 12 to, let's say, 4.30, 5 o'clock. And, you know, in the building, you know, at 6.30 at night, you'll see, you know, the entire D-line group working with each other and doing extra. You know, wide receivers the same way. It's, it's you know, it's the way it's supposed to be. We're starting to build that culture of, of doing extra and, and doing it together. Um, but uh, this young group uh, has done a great job off of the field and, and who they are. And... Uh, I love the talent and what they've done in the weight room, all of those things. Uh, I think uh, as we go through spring ball, we're going to find some guys that uh, will be ready to compete and help us next fall. What's your reaction when, when the first time a couple of those guys stand up and are willing to, to, to talk in front? I mean, as, yeah, I mean I are you sitting in the back up, of the room or you're like? I stand up and, no, well, I'm in the front of the room, first of all, <laughs> but uh, um, <laughs> to stand up and walk down to the front and look your peers in the eye like that. That's a rare thing to be able to do when you're 18 years old. I'm not sure I could have done that. And uh, they've done it in an unbelievable way where they've spoken truth, positive and negative to the team. And, and our veterans have, have accepted that and them in a, in a really positive way. It's, uh, it's a team that continues to get closer and closer. 
did you know that they had that 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 their their personalities that they were because we hear so much about this generation doesn't communicate very well it's all about you know they just text and they won't you know they can't necessarily look people in the eye and communicate did you have an idea personality wise that maybe it wouldn't happen this fast but those guys had that makeup some of that makeup I've never been around young guys that have been ready to do it at, at this point. And, you know, part of our leadership communication on Wednesday, I think, has uh, helped facilitate that. It's helped facilitate them, you know, being interconnected with our football team so quickly. Um, but it's who they are, too. And, and uh, it's a really mature group at this point and, and uh, hope they continue down that stretch. They're still 18 years <laughs> old. So, um, you know, I'm going to. Not give too much credit yet, but uh, excited to get on the grass with them. Goals for this offense this spring? Yeah, um, develop uh, competition, develop depth, um, continue to grow fundamentally in, in techniques, and that's at every position. Uh, you get into scheme and, and uh, how we can be better. There's so many things that uh, I'm not sure we got time for that right now. <laughs> Um, we can be way more efficient in how we function and operate, and ultimately, uh, it's our job to be on the offense side, uh, plus one at the end of a ball game, and got to be good enough to do that. How much faster can you grow? I mean, I know you grew last year, but it was such a learning curve of how to work. Now, how much faster can you grow schematically? Because the the piece of learning how to work on the practice field, the way it's expected in your program, is not is not the number one thing you have to teach. Yeah, just like our off, our, uh, our off season became more efficient, kids understood the expectations, it looked cleaner to the, you know, the general observer. Um, you know, that's the way offensively we can play. We can be better with our ball mechanics, we can be more efficient in the way we function and operate and get lined up and how quickly we're able to snap the ball. <clears throat> Again, for us, it, it's, you know, we don't have a set time on the clock that we're trying to snap it. We wanna play as efficiently as we can when we are playing with that tempo. Uh, a year ago, that was obviously a, a good chunk of the ball game. Um, we, uh, we just gotta continue to grow. And at the same time, you know, we lost two receivers, <coughs> lost a right tackle, you know, probably played just over, you know, half of the season. Uh, some guys that had to step in and play for him at times too, but it, it's a reset button. Every January, you know, I said it earlier, you know, your wins don't count, your losses don't count. There's no play that you made last year that's just automatically going to happen this year. you got to reset and go to work and, and, uh, and grow as a competitor. And our, our guys are doing that, excited to, to watch them compete for, for spring ball. Defensively, identity, is it clear now, whereas last spring it was trying to figure out a little bit of what you had type uh, deal? Yeah, uh, we're more solidified in, in personnel uh, on the defense side of the football than we probably were a year ago. Uh, have guys in, in their natural better position uh, at this point. That great, you know, a lot more understanding of what we're doing. <coughs> Obviously, uh, in particular in the secondary, uh, we got to develop some guys and, and develop some depth there. Um, you know, we got to have a great off season and, and uh, continue to, to make up ground. How excited are you to get back out and go to work? I mean, this this is what you're. I mean, that's what you're about. I mean, you like to recruit, I know, but you're you're about ball and ball and ball. How excited are you to go pads and grass and, and yeah. go to work? I love each phase of the off season when I'm, we were in the middle of, of uh, you know strength and conditioning and some install stuff. <coughs> and people would ask, "Man, are you ready for spring ball?" I, you truly love that part of the season, boy. Now that spring ball is here, let's. Let's go. Let's get on the grass and let's go strain and compete. Let's make some mistakes. Let's grow from it and, and uh, keep getting better. Cool. Thanks for your time. Appreciate it. Always go Big Orange. You've been listening to the Ball Quest podcast every week here on Ball Quest.